There's a tradition in the commentaries that talks about the karmic rewards of different activities. And the forest tradition tends to play these down, except for one. That's the reward of keeping the place clean, keeping the monastery clean. They say that's very closely associated with wisdom. And John Lee talks about how Venerable Sarabuddha would always keep things clean. He's putting on his robe, he saw some leaves that were in a path. He would use his foot to clear them away. In other words, he saw that his foot was free, didn't have anything else to do, so he put it to good use. And John Cha talks about how Venerable Sarabuddha, at the end of the meal, would stay on at the refectory, the place where the monks ate. Because the monks back in those days didn't all eat at the same time. Some, those who came earliest would set up the place, have their meal, and then leave. Those who came last were the ones responsible for cleaning it up. But Venerable Sarabuddha, whether he was first or last, he would always stay to be one of the last monks to make sure everything was neat and clean, put in the right, in right order. And of course, he's the monk who's extolled for having excellent wisdom. There's another story about a monk who gets a novice to clean the monastery. And the novice doesn't want to do it, but he goes ahead and does it anyhow. And then at the end, when he's finished cleaning it up, he says, I want to, the wisdom of this is going to come from this. I want to be somebody who can ask questions that nobody can answer. Well, the monk who got him to do the work overheard that. And so he made a vow. I was the one who got him to do the work. So I want to be the one who can answer the questions. And the tradition is that in a later lifetime, the novice was reborn as King Melinda, and the monk was reborn as Nagasena, who was able to answer all of Melinda's questions that nobody else could answer. So there was wisdom. You don't have to think about long-term comic re results. Think about it in the present moment. There's wisdom in keeping a place clean. When we get this place, it's new. It doesn't belong to us. Remember, we're caretakers. We're going to be passing it on to somebody else. We like to pass it on in as new a condition as possible. And you make a place new every time you clean it. People come and they feel refreshed. They see that the monastery is being well taken care of. And the people who live in the monastery appreciate the fact that we have, are the beneficiaries of so much generosity. So look around you. There are always opportunities to keep something clean. It doesn't take that much extra time or energy, but it creates a much better atmosphere in the mind. And John Chan noticed that he, he would visit the, the huts of the monks, and he could tell the state of mind of the monk by how clean the hut was. And many of the monks who went to see a John Mun for the first time were always impressed by how clean the area was. Even living in the forest, it was very, very clean. So we're not here to inspire other people, but it's good for us, and it's good for the, the people who've given so many things for us to be able to practice here. And it's good for the people who come after us. As I said, we're caretakers looking after this place. So as we look after our minds, it includes looking after the place around us as well. As John Lee used to say, when you live in a monastery, make sure that your eyes are as big as the monastery. See what needs to be done, take care of it. And that's part of cleaning out your mind as much as any number of hours sitting with your eyes closed. So keep them open. Remember that cleanliness is next to mindfulness. The two go together very directly.